Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This is Statics Chapter 10 uh, We will cover Chapter 10.1 today In this um, recording Which is uh, related to Definition of moment of inertia For area And if you have the slide It actually include the radius of gyration Of an area, however our lecture Will skip that part Because for this kuliah, for this syllabus um, that portion is not uh, included in the syllabus, right? So we will focus on the moment of inertia uh, for an area, right? So um, the objective is for you to be able to understand roughly what is moment of inertia. We will not go in detail that much. However, you have an idea, rough idea, and then um, you are able to determine what is the value of a moment of inertia um, by an integration by integration. Right, so in chapter 2 basically there's two parts just like in chapter 9 where one part is we have to deal with integration to get into the um, what is the value that we needed and then the second part is basically composite where you do not need to do integration but still get the value right okay so uh, in terms of application if you have the slide you can see the diagram some diagram there um, Maybe I'll, I'll put some, some figure here, perhaps, if, if I remember. Right. Um, so in, in, in construction, you can see some, um, some common um, type of structure, especially if you go to the cross-section of the structure. Like, for example, you have a long beam, and then if you see the cross-section, you can see shape like I, H, C, etc. Right. So I might use some picture here, hopefully, inshallah. Um, so the question is, if you see that one, have you ever thought of, of, of the question, why is it the design is like that rather than a solid square or rectangle, right? Why is it like I compared to that one, right? So there's a reason for it and this chapter is one of the reasons for it, right? Okay, so that's in terms of application. Uh, similarly here in another slide, many structure members are made of tubes rather than solid square or round. Why? So it's also related to this, um, this, this chapter. All right. So what is moment of inertia roughly, right? So I'll I'll read two definition that you can actually see, um, find this online. One is the moment of inertia, otherwise known as the angular mass or rotational inertia of a rigid body, is a quantity that determines the torque needed for a desired angular acceleration about a rotational axis. Similar to how mass determine the force needed for a desired acceleration, right? So um, inertia that most people are common with or known, how to say, inertia that um, most people are aware of is more uh, inertia related to movement, right? Uh, when it is static, it will resist the tendency for acceleration for movement, or if it's in the movement, it will resist the deceleration. To stop right so we, we we normally people have heard of that one because it's commonly or more easier to relate to right for this one so it is the, the, the definition that I just mentioned just now says that just like um, um, the, the mass in terms of uh, inertia in terms of movement the mass itself have a determination or is a factor that leads toward how big is the inertia um, which basically resists um, the, the, the change of acceleration hence you need more force to, 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 to change the, the, the movement uh, for moment of inertia it relates to how much torque needed for uh, angular acceleration right? I read another uh, definition moment of inertia in physics Quantitative measure, uh, quantitative measures of the rotational inertia of a body. This means that the opposition that the body exhibits to having its speed of rotation about an axis altered by application of torque, turning force. Uh, the axis may be external or internal. All right, so it's related to axis, as we will see after this. Right. So basically, it is um, related to the how to say. Um, it opposes the tendency for rotation, right? And moment we have covered before. So when we say moment of inertia, it combines something that you have understood before about in, uh, inertia and also about, um, of moment, right? 
Anyway, so we will go into the I I will skip the the derivation. So we will go into this is uh okay. I'll show this just as as an illustration of how um the concept without going into the calculation yet how the concept uh, affects some aspect of design when you design things right now um okay unfortunately we don't have um an example here right but if i'm to use this one right i, I i'll okay i'll draw it first so if you have a beam like this a beam when we have support like this, right? we have a beam here and if you see the cross section of the beam one is something like this right? and one is something like this right? um, I think you can appreciate which one will bend more right? in this case of course to, to visualize it will be having the length there throughout this length, right? Similarly here. Okay. So um, basically, it's basically like this, right? If you have force here, either it's like this or like this, right? If you see the cross section, either it's like this or like this. Uh, I think you can appreciate that this one, where it's along the length, it tend to bend more compared to if you flip like this or like this, right? It tend to resist the bending um, better compared to like this, right? Generally speaking, right? This will be bending more than this one, right? So, um, why is that? The, the, the question is why is that? And basically, um, generally speaking, you can appreciate that because in this case, the axis is basically here. And this bends more, this bends less, right? In, 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 this, in the case of um, loading downwards, right? So you can see that there's a lot more distance further away from the axis in this case compared to this one, right? All of the area here is very close to the axis. Hence, this one resists more um, rotation or uh, bending, right? In that case, so that is why you can see that instead of, for example, okay, if I have to redraw this one, right? If this is thirty times hundred. And then this one is basically 30 times 100, right? So, because um, from this axis here, all the area is close by. From this axis here, a lot, of, a lot more area is further away. This tend to resist the bending more. Then that's why there's a reason why they... Because in this case, it's still the same volume, um, area and hence volume, right? If you have the same length, um, and you have the same area, basically you have the same volume, meaning you are using the same amount of material in terms of design. So, if I want to use the same amount of material but further increase the uh, resistance towards bending in this case, I can do actually like this. Right? Basically, if you have this is 10 and 100, this is 10 and 100, this is 10 and 100. Basically, the total area is still the same, right? Just like this, 30 times 100 is 3,000. This is basically what 10 times 100 is 1,000 plus 1,000 plus 1,000 becomes 3,000 um, in total, right? Meaning that if you multiply by the length, the volume is still the same. But here, from the axis here, the area further away from um, the axis is maximized. Hence, it will further resist the bending in, in this kind of loading. Right? So that's an, um, roughly why um, the, the design you tend to see, this is I design for example, right? or if you rotate, it becomes H design. So that's why you can see that kind of structure a lot in real construction. There's a reason for it, right? So with the same material, you can um, alter uh, the value of this property, hence the the reaction towards certain loading, for example.
right? Now, um, we will go into the equation, and from equation you can see that um, later on you can see how it relates to the area and the distance from the axis, right? So we we'll, we we'll leave this behind. This is just a rough. Um, Sorry um, to appreciate the concept, but when you calculate it, when we do calculation, or for the purpose of exam, normally um, um, this one will not get into the picture that much. Regardless. Alright, so um, moment of inertia will be based on a certain axis, and in 2D we will have x axis and y axis. Right, so basically the equation will be something like this. So ix is basically moment of inertia about x axis. Is it clear there? Should I make it bigger? So I x moment of inertia about x axis will be integration of y square d a. Okay, and I y moment of inertia about y axis equal to integration of x square d a. Right, so that is basically the equation. Now, several things here um, to relate to chapter 9. In chapter 9, we have also integration when we calculate for x bar and y bar. x bar and y bar is basically the coordinate for the centroid. Right? And if you recall, the equation does have x wave inside the equation. Right? So make sure you remember and you understand what is the difference between x, x bar and x wave. Right? x is just a point any point on the curve x bar is for the whole area x wave is for the element right now in this case we only have x so it's just x it's not x bar or it's not x wave right so and another thing for i x is y in here for i y is x in here right so make sure you get the the equation correct now another thing is um for centroid you have the option of Okay, for any integration, you have the option of vertical element or horizontal element. That's basically for any type of integration because for integration, you actually chop off the area into small minor element like this or like this, right? So you uh, you only have that two option of vertical or horizontal element. However, for centroid, any of this element can be used for any of the equation x bar, y bar, for example, right? But for um, moment of inertia, it is exclusive relationship, meaning that for ix, this can only be used for this element, for iy, this can be used for this element, right? Meaning for this particular equation, it can only be used for this element. Um, basically, um, if you just want to have a glimpse of why is it, for Let's say for ix, it is for ix is relative to x axis, right? So if you have the horizontal element, hopefully you can appreciate that any single point or every single point on this element in this element have the same distance from x axis. Hence, it's basically the element have the same uh, when you calculate moment of inertia because it's as we just discussed, it is relative to the distance from the axis, right? Further distance it will give a bigger moment of inertia and resistance, something like that. So, but if you have a vertical element, then each point is not having the same distance from x. So, in this case, uh, this element is valid for this equation, is based on how this equation is derived. That's number one. Number two, if you, you just want to memorize, um, just memorize that the x, uh, the, the, how to say? The moment the element should be the should be parallel to the axis. So for i x i x axis is like this. So element is horizontal. For i y uh, y axis is vertical. So you take better vertical element, right? So that's the thing. So that's one thing. If you want to use a different element for calculating i x or i y, meaning that. If you want to find i x using vertical element, or if you have to, because in certain question, just like as we have discussed in chapter nine, um, in certain uh, circumstances you are basically your your option is limited. You only have one element that you can use. For example, right? 
So the equation is like this. So for i x, integration of d i x and i y, integration of d i y. This is if you use um, vertical element here or horizontal element here, right? So make sure you know the distinct uh, distinction between this, right? So you cannot mix up the element. Right, so for i x equal to integration of y square d a is for this element, i x equal to integration of d i x is for this element. Right, do not this up. So that's number one. Now, to use this one, um, we actually need what is not covered in chap chap chapter ten point one actually, but it is chapter ten point two, which is parallel axis theorem. So. Here, um, because we need for this one, I'll, I'll just cover parallel axis theorem here, right? So this one will be parallel axis theorem, right? So basically, you have i x equal to i x prime plus d dy square, and i y is equal to i y prime plus e dx squared okay so hopefully you can still follow up till now right so all of these are equation that we need uh, power calculation right hopefully it is clear also right and no focus issues similar <coughs> now um, okay so hopefully this equation is quite straightforward so, uh, as we mentioned, this is x and y, it's not x wave and y wave, so we do not need to find the centroid of the element, we, do, we just need dA, meaning that when we select element, what is dA, and then you just plug in, and then you can integrate straight away. So, it's straightforward. In this case, dIx, we need dIx, meaning that um, this is the in, uh, uh, integral form of this element, when you have d, is differential for one element, right? So what is the um, integration about x axis of the particular element depending on the actual question, right? So, and it normally will need this equation. Now, this equation here is just relating by the name parallel axis theorem. It relates moment of inertia about axis that is parallel to each other. For example, um, basically is um, here it relates between uh, x axis and x prime axis. Now, x prime and y prime by definition is the axis that goes to the centroid of any particular shape. Right? Let me repeat. It is the axis, whether x is for x prime or y prime, that goes through the centroid of the area. So, meaning that if you have a shape like this, where this is the centroid. Okay, that the centroid. So if you have axis like this and axis like this, by definition, this is x prime and y prime. Right. So that is what it means. So in this equation, it relates x can be anyway, right? For example, this is x. This is x prime. For example. So for example, this is y, and this is y prime. Right. So uh, and the question can give you different x axis and y axis, right? Because it's just any axis, you can just set it anywhere. But x prime and y prime is by definition this one that goes through the centroid, right? It cannot be any other axis. Okay? So now, um, moment of inertia about x axis, for example, here is the, equals, the same as equal to moment of inertia about x prime, which is moment of inertia about this axis, plus a dy squared. A is simply the area, meaning that this area, this whole area, this multiplied by this one, for example, for rectangular. And dy is simply just the distance, the y distance between the axis. And by the same token, dx is basically the distance between the y axis. Right? So that's why for x, uh, for x axis, you have dy because it's vertical um, distance between the two. Uh, for y and y x y prime, you have dx, right? Now, make sure you understand that this dx and dy is not 
at all the same as whatever the x and the y you have here. Right? For example, here you have dx and dy. It's not that. It's not that. Parallelism theorem is different. It's not integration. So dx and dy is basically the difference between the distance between the two axes. All right. So I I I'll do try to do uh, some examples so that it is more clear. Hopefully, inshallah. Right. Um, so basically, the um, because we are, we are essentially are covering this part here. This one is from ten by two, but we have to use to plug in here, and we will show you after this. But now, now it's basically for integration. For integration, basically there are several steps. First, you have to select the element, either vertical or horizontal, right? And for some question, it's either or. You can use both, not a problem. So you can just use whichever equation you prefer. But for some question, um, you are stuck with a certain element, right? Um, so yeah, so with that, you have to know how to use all these four um, equation anyway. Right. Um, so here in the slides, this is the step by step. Choose the element. There are two choices: vertical or horizontal. There are some consideration. The element parallel to x-axis about which m moment of inertia is to be determined. Uh, sorry, the element parallel to axis about which the moment of inertia is to be determined usually results in easier solution. Right. So basically, these two equation normally is easier. If you have to determine i x, you just use this horizontal, which is parallel to the axis. If you have to use i y, you use vertical that is parallel to the uh, y axis. Right. So normally that's easier. Right. Right. And sometimes, but sometimes there's an issue with the equation of the curve. Right. So if you um, cannot express the, 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 the equation in the other variable for example if you have y equal to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 then x equal to what if you do not know how to get this expression meaning that you can express in term of x you can express y in term of x but you cannot express x in term of y Basically, you are stuck with this equation. Many basically you are stuck with um, integrating with respect to dx, right? Because in terms of x, hence you are stuck with vertical because vertical will have dx here, right? So that is an example of how the equation will limit your option because you cannot use horizontal for dy because you cannot even get that expression, right? So that's another consideration. And then you integrate. So basically, if after you have select the element, you just get dA, or in this case, you get dx, dix, or diy, and then you plug into the equation of in the integration for integration, and then you integrate, and then you get the answer. Right. So it's straightforward in that sense. <coughs> All right. So before we go to in that and uh, some example, I need to show you how to get this one first. Otherwise, you will not. Uh, it, 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 yeah. Otherwise, it will not be logical. Right? How is that suddenly become like that? Right? So, we'll have to show you this one first. Now, let's first take an example of a very basic shape, which is a rectangle. Right? This is a basic shape. And we consider this we have, we have base B and height H. Right? Let's take a generic rectangle like that h height b base right now and let's consider that uh, this is the central and it have axis x here and y here all right now if the question say find the moment of inertia about x axis so meaning i can use this one i x equal to integration of y squared d8 right so let me calculate on this part Right. So I x equal to integration of y squared d a for the element of horizontal. How the horizontal element here is basically you get this element, right? This is 
horizontal element. And this one does have the y here and the length here should be should be b, right? So it's b. So it's b b y. So you get b a equal to b b y, right? So if you plug in here, you'll have integration of y squared b dy. Alright? And then, what is the limit? The limit will be based on how you chop off the area, right? Basically, if you chop like this, the first element is here, the last element is here, right? So this here is minus h over 2, here is h over 2, right? Because 0 is here, this height is h, so obviously half h, half h there. So you have minus h over 2 and h over 2. So if you do this integration, what you get is this is b is constant, right? So you have y cube over 3. So from minus h over 2 to h over 2. So this 3 is constant, you take it out also, b over 3. You can get h over 2 cube minus minus h over 2 cube. Right? Um, basically, you have p over 3, uh, h cube over 8, minus h cube over 8, yeah, sorry, plus, right? Because minus and then this one still minus become plus, right? So basically, you have um, 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 becomes 2 over 8, 1 over 4, multiply here, you get 1 over 12, b, h cube. Right, so that is what you will get, 1 over 12 bh cube. Now, uh, notice that this axis here, x axis, is actually the axis that goes through the centroid. See? So in this case, x is actually x prime, y is actually y prime, right? So what I calculate here is i x prime actually, for rectangle, right? So any rectangle, because it's basically b times h of the area, um, if you calculate or if you integrate for i x prime, it will always be 1 over 12 pH cube. And you, if you refer to the table at the back of your statics book, right, if you have the same table, it's the same table that you see for um, centroid, right? So you have some shapes, rectangular, triangle, circle, semicircle, etc. For each shape, you have information about the centroid and also information about i x and i y, right? In that table, I x and I y is actually I x prime and I y prime because it is about the axis that goes to the centroid, right? Now, if you try to calculate for I y, I'm short of time here, but if you try, and it obviously will have to use a vertical element, vertical element, so it will be like h dx, right, for the area, and then if you repeat the steps. In the end, you'll get 1 over 12 hb cube. Right? You'll get 1 over 12 hb cube. It's just flipped because basically the element is like this. And if you calculate, you'll get that. Right? Please do try. If you haven't, please do try and verify for yourself. Does it become iy becomes 1 over 12 hb cube? Right? Do try. Do verify. It will be, be very good for you if you try yourself. Right? Now, let's change the question. Right. The question is now is about x here, right? But if we change the axis, where this is my new axis, this is x, this is y, right? So the x y axis is different right now, right? The question can you guys just give you any sort of axis? Where is it? Where where it is? Right? Basically, the origin becomes here, is which is not at the center anymore. Now. If you have to find i x, the equation will be still the same. Have to use the same element here, and this element will still be the same. Right? It will be still b and dy, so this element will still be the same. But the limit will be different, right? The limit will be different because right now this is zero, this is h, so it will be from zero until h. From 0 until h. Right? 
So when you do this integration and when you solve until the end, it will be something different, right? So in this case, you get um, <coughs> h cube minus zero is right? So you get one over three d h cube, right? So it's different. Than before, right? It becomes one over three pH cube, right? Now, is this smaller or bigger? One over three pH cube is bigger than one over twelve pH cube, right? And it's logical because when the axis is here, basically the area is basically like that, right? The the range um, of the area or the distance from the axis is basically nearer compared when the axis is here. This is and here is much further than the axis, right? So the distance from the axis is greater, hence the moment of inertia is greater, right? Yeah, as you can see. Anyway, so we have that value, right? Is there any way that we do not need to integrate every time? So that is where parallel axis theorem comes in, right? Now, based on this same diagram, so this will be x prime, this is will be y prime. Right, because again, x prime is the x axis that goes to the centroid. Y prime is the y axis that goes to the centroid. Right. Um, with this, we can apply i x for example here, and yeah, i x equal to i x prime. Now, i x prime for a rectangle, we have shown just now it becomes one over twelve b h q. Oops. H cube, right? Um, this one is either you can derive yourself just now when we have the cent uh, the axis axis here, you get one over twelve h cube just now, right? That's my number one. Number two, we also have uh, mentioned that you can directly refer to the table, and it's there one over twelve b h cube, right? Uh, or you can just memorize because this shape is so common that. Uh, I x become one over twelve pH cube. We expect you to memorize anyway because it's so common. You 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 see it every time, so we assume you already memorize it, right? So that's that's common. So one over twelve pH cube. That's I x prime, and then plus a. A is the area of this whole area, right? So basically, it's just b times h. And then we have d y. D y is what again? dy is the distance, the y distance between the two x, x axis, x and x prime. So this is dy. In this case, what is dy? dy is half of h. Now, dy is not, uh, it is basically whatever, meaning which is above which, is just the distance between it. And especially, it has square there, so it doesn't have negative and positive, right? So dy here is h over 2. So we have h over 2 squared. Right? So if you solve this one, 1 over 12 bh cube plus becomes 1 over 4 bh cube. So 1 over 12 plus 3 over 12 becomes 4 over 12 becomes 1 over 3 bh cube. As you can see, it is the same. Right? So whether you use parallel axis theorem or you integrate straight away, you should get the same. But in this case, one over three bh cube. Now, why are we showing this? Because this one will be used in certain shapes after this, right? So yeah, keep this in mind. Right? How to use um, parallel axis theorem to get the same answer as doing integration, right? However, this is simpler. Especially if suddenly you have a different x axis here or here, right? So what have, what change is just the distance, dy change, right? When the axis is here now, then dy becomes bigger, for example. Right? So that's easier to repeat and replicate compared to integration you have to do from scratch if the axis is different position, right? So that's why this is important. Uh, however, for the integration part, we will show why is this being covered right now, um, so you can understand after this, right? So, 
Yeah, we will go into an example. Okay, now we have the first example. Um, I'll show you for a bit here. We'll put the diagram here for a bit. Um, so the shaded area shown in the figure, and uh, we need to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis and y-axis, right? So you have x-axis and y-axis there. We need to find what is the moment of inertia about x-axis and about y-axis. Right, so if you need to take note of the diagram, you just take note for a minute, for a minute and we'll go straight, right? So basically, um, the area is something like this. And then you have y cubed equal to x squared. Right, and then it's 1 meter and 1 meter that. Okay, my marker is... Not. Okay, so what do you need to do? Right. Now, um, basically if you want to answer this, you just need to select which element that you want to use and just solve, right? You do not need to use all, right? Um, but I will try to show both so that you understand how to solve this during both, both equation if you need to. Alright, now... Um, easier, uh, easier one first, the easy one first, right? Um, for Ix, we we'll focus on Ix first. The easy one is just this equation and this element, right? Um, so in that case, we have a horizontal element, like that, right? So the equation will be also Ix equal to integration of y squared dE, right? And this element here, We'll have this is dy, and this one will be 1 minus x. Right? Because x, y coordinate here, right? So 1 minus x, you get this length. Right? In that case, dA is basically 1 minus x dy. Right? And, and you will be integrating with respect to y. <coughs> so x here, you have to convert into y, right? So basically from here, x equal to uh, y cube over 2 <coughs> right you yeah square root square root right so you have dA equal to 1 minus y to the power of 3 over 2 dy you'll have that one right so you plug in into this one so ix becomes integration of y square 1 minus y to the power of 3 over 2 dy so expanding this integration of y square mm, minus y to the power of what you get? 7 over 2 is it? dy what will be the limit? of course in this case it's from 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 0 to 1 Okay, you integrate this, you get y cube over 3 minus y 9 over 2, so 2 over 9. Right? So that from 0 to 1, from 0 to 1. So you get basically 1 over 3 uh, minus 2 over 9. So what do you have here? You get 3 over 9 minus 2 over 9 become 1 over 9. Right. This is in meter, so you get meter to power of 4. I didn't mention about the unit just now, but the unit is basically, if you see the, the equation, if each x and y is having unit of meter, x square or y square becomes meter square. And dA becomes another meter square, so you get meter to power of 4. Right? That's how to relate. So you get 1 over 9 meter to power of uh, 4, right? Um, correct. Right. Now, that is if you use the equation. What if you have to use this? Or you want to use this? In this case, you don't have to, but you want to, for example, right? So, let's do that one. Um, um, so, hopefully you understand this one. I'll wrap this for solution over there, right? So right now, 
we are using vertical element. <coughs> so if you use vertical element, it will be something like this. Correct? So in terms of... Yeah, that will be the element, right? Now, this will be dx, this will be y. And what we need is not dA, because there's no dA here, right? There's no point of finding dA here. dA is y dx, but it's not useful here. What you need is dix, right? So that, how to get that expression? So, one way is by using this one, right? So, um, hopefully you can see that this have a parallel to this. Where this is b and h, this is x, right? Meaning that, what is the moment of initial of this element about x-axis is similar case about if this, because this is triangle uh, rectangular, right? This is rectangular of y times dx, this is a rectangular h times b, right? So, uh, in this case, and the axis is at the bottom of the rectangle, right? Here and here. So, this case is parallel. This one, if you, if you want to use um, parallel stadium, and let's assume you do not memorize that one. So, if this is x prime, this is x, right? And the distance will be h over 2, in that case, right? And then b and h, right? So, um, ix equal to, we have shown this just now, but this is, for example, if you are answering the exam, right? ix prime plus a dy square equal to 1 over 12 b h cube plus b h h over 2 square and then basically you get 1 over 3 b h cube right now 1 over 3 b h cube is for this b times h however you can see that this b is relative to this dx when the rectangular is like this right and then this h is basically just y, the height itself, this y, right? So if you replace that, and you get dix for the um, element, basically you get 1 over 3 y cube dx, right? That's already arranged, um, the arrangement is already rearranged, right? If you plug in straight away, 1 over 3 dx y cube, right? 1 over 3 dx y cube. But normally the dx we put at the end, right? So it becomes like that. Now, if you, are, if you already obtain this, then you can, can plug in here because what we need is dix, right? So um, ix becomes integration of dix, right? Where the limit will be from 0 to 1 in this case, right? So um, this will be integration from 0 to 1, 1 over 3 y cubed dx. Of course, we need to integrate with respect to x there, so we need to change here. So y becomes x 2 over 3, x power of 32. So you plug in there, so it becomes 0 to 1, 1 over 3, y cube. Sorry, y cube is already y cube because to x squared, right? So you do not need to do this there. So it becomes x squared dx. If you integrate that, so you get what 1 over 3 outside, so x cube over 3 from 0 to 1 so if you plug in you get 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 you get 1 over 9 meter power of 4 which should be the same 1 over 9 1 over 9 here right so any which way you do right this these two it should be giving you the same answer right one might be easier than the other. This one might be longer a bit because you have to find um, the ix first, right? To plug in that. So that's how you find ix using both equation. Should I show for iy? Or you understand already? You should? I should? Hmm. Alright, let's try for iy. Uh, okay. Now, we we'll start fresh for IY. So, if you draw the uh, element, uh, the area here, okay, my mark is already. Can you see this one? 
Okay, you can still see, right? So, um, if I'm using I Y here, it will be vertical element, right? So, using vertical element, so you get this equation I Y equal to integration of x square dA, right? So I Y equal to integration of x square dA. dA will be what? In this case, this is dx, this is y, so uh, dA is x, uh, y dx, right? Uh, that's right, right? So dA is y dx. But y is, what is the equation again? So it's y cubed equal to x squared, eh? Yeah. Sorry, yeah y cube equal to x square so y is basically just x to the power of 2 over 3 so dA is x power 2 over 3 dx so you plug in here into dA you have times x 2 over 3 dx right so in this case what you get is integration of x to the power of uh, what do you have? 6 7, 8 8 over 3 is it? dx It is from 0 to 1 yet again So in this one you will have x 8, 9, 10, 11 11 over 3 becomes 3 over 11 from 0 to 1 so if you plug in the state with 3 over 11 meter to power 4 Right So basically you get that answer, right? So that's how you find IY Now, um, do you, do you In this case, okay, if you need Because normally we don't do this because it will become So different Now, if you have this one, okay, my, my drawing is already bad like that. So, if you want to use this one, right, it will be much, much more complicated because to find DIY using parallel axis theorem, um, when the y prime axis is there and y axis is here, so dx here is something that makes the equation um, much more difficult than before, right? Because before, uh, as you mentioned, when um, the axis is at the base of the rectangle, it's straightforward still. But for this case, it is something plus something, and it's beyond what we uh, prepared to do normally. So we'll just do not do this, right? We we'll just stick to that one. But in the for this one, for this shape, for ix, both way are not that difficult, right? So we have shown both. Alright, so hopefully you understand how to find moment of initial about x axis and moment of initial about y axis for the given shape or area just now. Okay, we have another problem, another example which is level of group problem solving. This is another example that we have to cover. Um, what's the question? Okay. So I will show you a bit. So I'll put the the diagram. Um, so have you have the shaded area shown, um, and you need to find again i x and i y. Right. Um, but this is in terms of h and b, I guess. Right, as you can see that. Um, right. So what should you do? Alright. So I'll draw this the thing here in the middle. Just for reference, um, so the area is there, and then you have this as H, you have this as B, right? And then equation Y equal to H over B cube, H over B cube, uh, X cube. That is the equation, right? So let's try for i x using that one, right? That one. So meaning that this is horizontal. 
you are using this one, right? You are using i is equal to integration of y square d. So what is d in this case? This is b minus x, right? B minus x, and then this is dy. So d a in this case is b minus x dy. But because we will integrate with respect to y, so what is x here? So x will be the okay, x cube and um, this one again. X cube will be uh, b cube over h y. So x becomes b over h to power of one over three, y to power of one over three. So in this case, d a is b minus x is always b over h power 1 over 3 uh, y to power 1 over 3 uh, and then dy this is all x right okay this is interesting right so if you solve you just plug in this da into this one right so ix is equal to integration of y square multiply by b minus b over h over 1 over 3 uh, y to power 1 over 3 dy so if you explain this one ix becomes integration of b y square here and then minus b over h over 1 over 3 uh, y 7 over 3 dy right so the limit will be from 0 to h from 0 to h so integrate this one b y cube over 3 minus b over h 1 over 3 and then you have y uh, 10 over 3 so 3 over 10 from 0 to h so if you plug in y you plug in h into y so you have b h q over 3 minus b over h 1 over 3 you have 3 over 10 there still so you have here h 10 over 3 uh, Alright, so it become 1 over 3 b h cube uh, minus 3 over 10. Um, so h 10 over 3 divided by h 1 over 3 becomes 9.3. Okay, so it becomes b h cube there. This will, okay, 1 over 3 becomes, if you times 10, 10 over, 10 over 30. 10 over 30 divided by uh, 9 over 30 so you will get 1 over 30 1 over 30 d h cube that it is in terms of the expression of in terms of the variable of p and h so let's just check so it should be 1 over 3 and uh, 1 over 30 b h cube so that is correct right um that is if you use that one right should i should i should i show if we, we use this one that is where's my now if we use this equation ix equal to integration of the ix and uh, using vertical element so the element will be different now the element will be vertical where this is dx and the height is y alright so if we do this this is again a case of where the base is x axis and from b and h we get ix equal to 1 over 3 b h cube 
just as we have just shown just before, right? It's the same case here. So if you bring here, um, dix becomes 1 over 3 y cubed dx, right? And uh, y cubed, what is the equation here just now? Okay, this is the equation, right? So when we have y cubed, so uh, dix becomes uh, this all of this thing. Sorry, dix become one over three y cube is this one holds power of three, right? Um, so h power of three over b power of nine x power of nine. That will be dix. I hope no mistake has been made. So you plug in here. So ix is integration of dix, which is integration of this whole thing. One over three h cube over b power of nine x power of nine. Uh, where is it? Oh, you have you have dx here, right? Dx is there. So dx. What is the limit? The limit is from zero to b. 0 to b, right? So if you integrate this one, this up front is all constant, right? 1 over 3 h cube over b9. So integrate x power of 9, x power of 10 over 10 from 0 to b. If you plug in 1 over 3 h cube over b of 9 times b to of 10 over 10 so you'll have 1 over 30 b h cube which is the same right as you can see here it becomes 1 over 30 b h cube the same as this one right 1 over 30 b h cube so we have shown second time that solving anyway will give you the same answer so it's for you to decide which one is easier or which one you prefer if you have the choice like this right so if you use for uh, iy or if you calculate iy because the question actually say what is ix and what is iy so if you calculate iy using this equation for example then you still use um, vertical, right? So now we are calculating for oops. Allah. We are calculating for I Y. So in this case for I Y, so integration of x by dA, you do need dA. So dA is y dx. And y is this equation, right? So dA is h over b cubed x cubed dx if you plug into here so you get i y equal to integration of x square times h over b cube x cube dx or in, the, in other words integration of h over b cube x to the power of 5 dx the limit will be from 0 to b right zero. B. So you get uh, h over b cube x to of 6 over 6 from 0 to b. So if you calculate this one, h over b of 3 uh, times h over 6 over 6. Right? So basically, 1 over 6 b cube h. Right or one over six h b q. Right, you get that one in the end. Right, so it's the same as the slide. All right, so that's another example completed um, for the concept quiz, etc. Hopefully, based on your understanding, you can try. So that's the end of ten point one. Um, we have covered in the class. Um, some examples 
uh, especially solving the previous exams exam questions from uh, previous exams for this particular chapter chapter 10.1 right so if you actually miss that class please watch the recording for the class right normally it is in the um, playlist of the semester right so watch is there um, we did go through some very significant um, past exam questions that you need to understand if for example you miss the class right if you have if you are in the class just uh, in, in that class you know what we have covered right so that is important all right so that is it for this lecture um, this is statics uh, 10.1 um, the next lecture will be 10.2 see you then inshallah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh